Hello ladies and gentlemen and all my non-binary friends and welcome back to my channel for the end of an era. We are finally wrapping up Avatar The Last Airbender. Yes, I know that there are multiple episodes in this one so this one will be an extra long video. You got Netflix to thank for that because Netflix has coupled all of the Sozin's Comet episodes all together. I believe there's like four of them? Maybe five? I don't even know how many we're about to watch today. Uh, but I do know that it's going to be an extra long stream, so make sure you got your snacks, make sure you run to the restroom, uh, make sure that you have done all the things that you need to do, get some water, get some cozy, comfy clothes on, and let's get to it, shall we? If this is your first time ever to my channel, this is a watch along series, meaning you have to have me open up on a separate tab in order to watch along with me. Uh, this way, you have Netflix open there. I am open here. If you want to listen to something without any commentary, simply mute myself and then unmute me when you're ready to talk to a friend again. Or jump back ahead to the very end of this video and you can see those timestamps down below to see my thoughts after the videos are over. I wanted to say an extra thank you to everybody that's been on this entire journey with me since the very beginning. I know watch alongs are not as popular as the reaction series as some of the other ones that show the video on the screen, but I think this is a different kind of format that a lot of people can benefit from. So thank you guys so very much for being with me the entire time. If you do like my kind of content, make sure you subscribe and make sure you comment down below so that I know I can continue making this stuff for you. The channel will continue to have daily shorts coming from my Twitch channel, or if you'd like to see me live in the meantime between series, you can always go over to twitch.tv slash Sharvana and we can hang out there. Let's do this. This is Avatar The Last Airbender, Sozin's Comet, starting in three, two, one, go. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon, yes! Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Oh, I got it perfect that time. It was perfect. Ush. Avatar, the last airbender. Previously on Avatar. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oof. Let's go, you go. Grumpy base. <laughs> but um, what good angry faces they draw. I love her face just being like, I, I don't know that I can't even believe I did that. <laughs> Book three, fire, chapter 18, Citizen's Comment, part one, The Phoenix King. <laughs> Let's go, firebender. Rah. 
Cute. Get up. Warm? <laughs> Fun. Sandcastle? Sand Alpha. That's pretty legit. <laughs> this is pretty good. Are you sure she doesn't have like little bits of avatar in there somewhere for her? It's a blobfish. It's sticky. He's trying. They don't even get mad at each other for little things like that. I love them. Surprise attack. Surprise attack? Just like, be ready for the art of surprise? Like, that was the beach day we all needed. I enjoyed the other beach episode, but, like, that was the true, just, like, this is a beach episode. What? Zilka? What are you doing, my dude? The Art of Surprise lesson. I mean, I guess they can put out fires pretty fast, but at the same time, you are letting that house and that tree burn, burn. Is he just getting spicy because, like, the change in the, the comment? I don't know. I think it's just a lesson. Spicy! Sure. Yeah, I was gonna say.
Damn. There's just gonna be like a lot of ash, dude. When you burn everything to the ground, like what is there left to to rule? It's like killing everybody and everything. It's like you have a plot of land left. And if you burn it to to bits, it's not even a usable landscape. Like, what is the point? Yeah. They're all very capable children. I will say that. But <laughs> I'm not touchy. I don't like the touchy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, where's Iroh? Are we just not finding that out for him? In hindsight, we probably should have got more of that water. If any of them had to go against and, like, pretend to be the big bad, she is the most capable outside of Aang. <laughs> so, probably for a great idea. I was wondering how she's setting on the fire. There you go. Damn, dude.
Oh my gosh. I'll probably be mad. Hmm. Cause like the good in me wants to be like, yeah, of course don't take his life because human being, but at the same time he is wiping out nations of people. And you're the only person that is supposed to take care of that. It's gotta be a big imposition, but like that gum. It's not really a good answer to that one. <laughs> oh, I thought we had like a cult coming or something. I don't know. It's all the uh, men chanting. I was like, oh no, I'm not a cult person. I, I, I scare out of cults. Not a chanting. Avatars of the past, you come to talk to your past selves. Yes, no? Where are we going? I can't find no more. Sleepwalking is not good. Hmm. Hmm. That's so cute! Let's go, Todd! <laughs> I loved that! That was so adorable! I want a life-changing adventure, too! Aww. Aww. And she's actually like trying. She's opening up.
ック。They're not wrong. They're, uh, uh, but yeah, you think you would know where he would be better. Passing say? Nah, too far, right? That's lighted. Oh, how dare you? Got new designs and everything ready for this whole thing. He's like, I got a new flag. I got, uh, we have a branding. Let's go, sir. <laughs> Very horrifying. Um, but okay. I like that it's all about fashion, too. <laughs> uh, trying to make light of this is hard because, ow. Yeah. 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 Don't let the drinks spill. Never let the drinks spill. <laughs> Uh huh. I forgot about her. She was also pretty bad, eh? Moving Island? Is it kind of like uh, Midas's Island? I'm thinking all Aladdin like. On the back of a turtle? Book three, fire! Susan's Comet, part two! The Old Masters! Part two, part two, part two! Like figures. Oh, 
Pojď jde. This is such a callback. I love that we went all the way back to this. I was thinking that. Ah. Alright, bro. Let's go. We're gonna get to see Iroh again. I'm so excited by this. And he's gonna be dragged. Is he going to be? Is he going to actually be helping anybody? Is he going to be like living in his own little commune plantation he's he's created, or is he going to be in a tea shop or where? I don't think he'll be by himself. Meditate? Yeah. All the callbacks. <laughs> Mm. 
Oh, I didn't even realize! Water. I just, like, straight up... Yeah! That is kind of cute, though. Yeah! Oh my gosh! Why did I not recognize any of these guys? It's just like... <sighs> the Lotus Sub! Why have I just not ever thought of that? Oh my gosh! I just like swept all this stuff under the rug. Still so silly. Yeah, like, I... Maybe I was just so expecting somebody else to be there that I just didn't expect those three masters to be together. Obviously, the Earth King is somebody very distinctive, so I saw him right away, but, like, didn't click that there was other ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not just good for trying to beat up the Fire Lord. It was good for, for a lot of different small tactics around the world. If they had more of this going on, it may not be as in dire uh, situations as we expected. What if there's people in those buildings, by the by? Um... Just know which ones are occupied by, by firebenders and just be like, These are gone. <laughs> Dang, Yeah. 
It's going to make it so much more impactful when he doesn't end up killing the Fire Lord because every single past being himself is just being like, you have to make decisions. You have to do this. You need to kill him. They're not saying it straight out. They're just being like, make a decision. And so he's going to make a decision. And I think he's going to like spare him somehow, some way. But I don't know how. Just gonna let him sleep. <laughs> kind, but at the same time, really creepy to wake up to. I feel that ink. I'm interested. I, I'm curious to see how they're going to do it, but I don't think he's actually going to. Get around and hug him. Oh, gosh, I love him. <laughs> he's cute. I knew he was going to do it. I just didn't expect him to do it that fast. It was just one of those things. It was so cute. Oh my gosh, may everybody have an Iro in your lives. Oh gosh. Oh wow. Oh. Made me so happy. <laughs> wow. I gotta pay attention, but my heart is just still on the Iro moment. <laughs> what? 
creature is this? Is it a turtle? <sighs> it makes me think of Aladdin. Unquestionable? I'm I was gonna say. Yeah, there might be little questions there. Just a small inquiry here and there. <sighs> okay, it took a while. It took a while, but like we're on board. Yeah. You better not die. Now oh, he's scary expendable, and I don't like that. I don't think he's gonna die. But if this was a more kill off people kind of show Iroh I would have my eye on to be like oh this is a potential one just the eyeball yeah Oh yeah, I forget they're like two. A lion turtle. There's always two, but it is turtle.
don't know what the heck is happening. <laughs> hella confused by all of this, but you know what? Uh, some of the Avatar things just go over my head sometimes, so that's okay. I'm not the Avatar. I don't have to understand it. No. Book three, fire, chapter 20, Susan's Comet, part three, into the inferno. It'd be nice if they could just like push the comet away. I know it's probably, it's very big, it's very, very big, but we have seen the Avatar do some amazing things. Yeah. We get to say goodbye. Okay. Power plays. What an interesting creature. They all have been. That was lucky. They're like geese. <laughs> Boy, I would not be on the edge of that. One false gust of wind and it's just like <laughs> done. I think it's got the easiest job right then. I <laughs> could just be there like, think. <laughs> She's basically like a bridezilla. Oh my gosh, ma'am. Ma'am! She is like on her high horse about this whole banishing thing. Uh. 
Five minutes late, you fired. That's a bad boss. Nice. That still had to be pretty toasty. This is like horrifying. the rest of them wouldn't notice Now, will they be rescued or? <laughs> hmm. Now, would you want to take out all the other ships or would you just want to go try to take out the one ship with the Fire Lord on it? Yeah, she's not making very good decisions. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay.
Ooh. What are those, like, tornadoes that are, like, spiraling fire whenever they pick up fire? What are those things called? Because, dang, it looks like that. Never learned how to do our own hair. Going through a break. Her friends leaving her left a big hole. Because you know the pressure of, of leading people did not like actually cause all of this. It was just the friendship that she had. And her mother, of course, yes. But the uh, two were the final straws, I think. Ooh, this is like a little flamethrower, quite literally. Oh my gosh. Who's half of the animals? Like, hot damn. <laughs> Quite literally. jetpack yeah you could jetpack out of that never mind <laughs> wait it's not gonna do it hmm. very anime two pillars yeah we should have a therapy session with him we should <laughs> Also, weren't there so many people on that ship? I'm just, I, I understand we're, we're concerned about the one life, but there's a lot of lives. You did that in the first episode of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been wearing it. I I'm 
curious that none of them saw this rogue ship as a problem. Climbing fast off of something, you gotta learn how to climb fast. Let's go, Sokka. I don't know if the top is gonna hurt them much. If it's not over land, you can totally survive that fall into the water. You just have to have stuff break your water waves first. Otherwise, it's going to be like smacking down straight on cement. Oof. Didn't even notice her haircut. Nobody ever notices the haircut. <laughs> Even her stance has become erratic. Erratic. I saw my hero first. This is so very Dabi Todoroki at the fire, different kind of blue fire and, and orange fire. Gotta be some well timed defense, dude. Cool. A heck of a battle map, huh?
What a time to have a firefight, too, with the comet. I normally don't like when they have s sullen music over fights like this, but I'm liking this one a lot. Because they're still getting to hear the flames. And truthfully, like, they're not having anything like that. They're just having the flames around them. So I kind of enjoyed that. I don't think he's dead. I thought if that had hit Katara, then that would have been Aang finding out about it and finally going full Avatar state or something, but... Shh. <laughs> Book three, fire, chapter 41, Sozin's Comet, part four. Let's go. Avatar Aang. Yeah, that's what they needed to do. The top was great, but the top had no engines or anything on them. Don't you drop her! Don't you drop yourself! Oh. Ow. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine it in real life? That would be so freaking painful. Oh my god. Snap your spine painful. Boomerang? Maybe one day. It's fine. It was worth it. It was worth it. Suki. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> ah, what a moment! What a moment, too! <laughs> Are 
Are you not out of matches, my boy? Jeez. Funk. Talking about back breaking. His cheese started flowing again. He's good. He's good. Ooh, scary. <laughs> Buddy, you done messed with the wrong avatar. It's like horrifying at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I stand by my statement. All the elements combined? Be a pretty cool tattoo. I was just saying. Come on, Boomy. Let's go. Like it's great, but it also just doesn't seem fair at this point anymore. And like, not that it's ever supposed to be fair, but you know what I mean. Just like, ooh. My grandma's been hit by lightning twice and she's still kicking. So come on, Zuko. I just don't know what we're gonna do with her. Like, I have a feeling that that more than anything, the the Fire Lord will will be spared because of Aang. But I don't know what we're gonna do with Azula. I think she should be spared, but I I don't know how it's gonna come about. I mean, that was heckin' smart, dude. That was one power play right there. Very good. Very, very, very good. Without using bloodbending, too, but I mean, could have been a tactic, but dang, that was very smart.
Oh, you guys got a front and back scars. really sad too actually <laughs> she's going through her own break and like nobody has been there to help her either so like I really feel for her <laughs> It's like I'm facing a demigod. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> and like, the Fire Lord has to keep fighting and not just running away because like, wait, if you are on the side of the Fire Lord, then like, this is his only moment to even attempt to defeat him because this is when he is at his strongest with the comet. So, can't beat him now. Can't beat the Avatar ever. But, Lord have mercy. Psychological warfare. <laughs> you have to talk to me. That's the ultimate price. <laughs>
Well, I did not see that coming. Ah. That is one heck of a power. A little clean up. Momo. Is that going to be enough, though? What? I just don't know if that's going to be enough. Like, it might be enough for the show, but just in general, that's a whole regime of people. They got a happy ending. <laughs> All right, they're, they're fine. I just, meh. <laughs> Not a lot of trust in that relationship, I should say. Cool. Heck yeah. Cool! That's a cool place for her. That's a cool place for her. That's, that's a cool place for her. So much fabric on both of them. <laughs> I love it. This is kind of full circle too, how the Avatar and the Fire Lord before were friends, and I, I dig that.
Yeah. Cool. Cool. But even like shared that moment like that. Yeah, what did they do with the Fire Lord? I thought we were going to end. I was like, wait, the series is going to end on that? Wait, it might still, because I don't know if we're going to get there again. Wait. Wait. What? Tisha? Tisha? Just a gentle tea. Maybe you're not good at that, though. I appreciate you trying. At least we could tell who they were. I'll give you that. They smooch. They're going to try. That's cute. I think it's cute. Was it necessary? Not necessarily, but it's cute. The end. The end. Good series. Good series. All right, buckle up, Buttercup, because we have a lot to cover in this. Uh, we had a whole bunch of episodes all in one. So allow me just to like try to talk about them all together and hopefully we can stay on the same page. There's a lot going on in this episode from the very, very beginning where we're like three days away from it to it coming to its full completion. I love Zuko. Zuko has been an amazing character throughout from the very start of these episodes to the very end of these episodes. He even shows us his tenacity, his strength, his his willingness to change. And that has been something that I have been wanting from this character from the very start. And we get him to being like taking this so seriously at the beginning of this episode. It's like, you guys, the beach episode is all well and cute, but 
we can't have that now. It's three days away. This is what's going to happen. This is so destructive and my father is going to destroy everything. Like this is going to happen and we can't have that. Um, so having him come in with all of the seriousness, all of the drive and all the tenacity of like this must be stopped uh, is very, very telling, especially when you had that insane drive at the very beginning to hunt the Avatar. Zuko drops the bomb on them that like this is going to be like eradication. It is not going to be something of like just like, oh, yeah, they're just taking over. This is eradication. This is them wiping out an entire area and just like hoping it'll rise from the ashes one day. And that is so insane to me. First of all, like, I just, what is left to rule when it's just ash? There is nothing. So I don't think that this is a very smart plan for the Fire Lord. Um, but it's also extremely, extremely bad. Um, we have uh, Toph. I love that we also have that that training montage where they have not montage, but uh, they're trying to fight the Melon Lord. <laughs> and uh, out of all of them, they choose Toph. Toph is such a beast. I, if we did not have the Avatar, I feel like Toph would be somebody that like would have the potential to be the Avatar. You know what I mean? She's got such a wide scope of things about her and so much power that it's it's pales in compared to every, everybody else just pales in comparison. Um, so I'm glad that she was down for it and she's just like, let's do it. I guess to pretend to be them. Let's go. I can go against you. Um, and she does a very good job. Uh, Aang and his whole thing about not killing anyone. What a big decision. I feel, I, I figured by the end of this, the Fire Lord would still be alive. Um, just because it's how this show has been going. But I just also was very aware that every single adult that he was talking to, more so from his like past lives and past selves, were saying like, justice needs to prevail and do it at any means you can. Is it a jaded thing as we grow up? Is it myself included just being like, is it a jaded thing to think that maybe like ending it instead of like encouraging it further on is a good idea? Because I'm going to even say it by the end of this, we have the Fire Lord in captivity. Is that a better life than just having it ended? For him specifically, that is an open question to anybody. I don't know. I don't know what's right or wrong in that situation. Um, but I also know that the life in prison in that cell was not great. <laughs> At least not what we saw from Iroh and such. So, also, who knows that, like, is it over at this point? It seems to be over, and perhaps for the sake of having it doing, like, a nice little bow on top of the cake, it's over, but you also fought a lot of people during this episode, and a lot of families will probably be impacted by the choices that you made. We may have not outright killed anybody, at least not that we know of on screen, but we also took down a lot of airships, like a lot of airships. And just because there's fire on the ground and there's no fire by the time we all did not clean up, doesn't mean that anybody didn't get injured or perhaps lost their livinghood. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm curious to see if there was like anybody on the outskirts that was like still pro old Fire Lord. Like, Ozen, are they, like, still people uh, bringing in the behind shadows and such? Because I don't know at this point. You still have your leader. He's in prison, but he's still a viable option of breaking out. Has he lost his firebending abilities? Yes. Let's go ahead and talk about that. <laughs> the Lion Turtle. I'm so glad that we're finally getting more of the spiritual moments of the Avatar. I wanted to learn more about the Avatar as the Avatar, you know? I This whole season, we haven't gotten too much of that because we had that blocked chi. And it's been good to see that Aang have these abilities again and be able to talk to spiritual beings or to have these magical moments happen. And... Um, being able to talk to the turtle lion and learn how to redirect energies within yourself. Interesting to me. I didn't see that coming. Wasn't sure how that was going to play out. And uh, we did get it. We get it for the energies of like being able to firebend or not to be able to firebend. It's kind of almost like blocking the chi like Tai Lee does, but just like internally, <laughs> which is intriguing. I'm... I'm wild out by that. I enjoy that this is the direction that we took, but at the same time, I don't know if taking away his fire ability is enough. 
I thought it might change his attitude or like change his perspective on things too, but I don't, that, that isn't what happened. And I feel like that would be too mystical of like thinking that you can manipulate somebody's opinions and thoughts and stuff from the inside by doing that. So taking away his firebending ability seems like the right decision. I just don't know if many people are going to take that as enough of a decision just to get rid of him. A lot of questions abound for me when it comes to punching uh, Aang right in the spot where he got electrocuted uh, and I guess return to him his flow of chi. I'm not sure how that works out. He still had to give up everything in order to access the Avatar state. We didn't see Aang give up anything to access the Avatar state. How did that work? I'd love to know your explanations in the comments below, and I'll probably be doing a little bit of my own research just to have a different opinion on it. For those of you that know me on Twitch, you guys know I am a mystery streamer and I love to figure out a good mystery. And I have given myself grace on this a lot of the time and just been like, you know what, we'll just enjoy. Push everything else a lot aside and just enjoy. So I've been watching this whenever I've had free time and just losing this as my downtime to just like not overthink and not go into this too deeply because sometimes it does work out and sometimes I'm definitely overthinking things. I definitely for a long time, for those of you that have stuck with me through this series, uh, suspected Iroh not to be a good person and I feel like I missed out on some of the lessons and some of the things that he could have taught us throughout because I was so skeptical because of all the other games and videos and movies that I typically watch and was so sus on him to turn on us. Um, so I let myself go in the last few episodes and not, or last season, I should say, and not try to overthink anything. And I feel like that gave me some really good surprise moments with this episode. We had so many good callbacks coming in. We had so many good characters returning. And, uh, my favorite bit had to be the White Lotus. Uh, we had all the different masters and teachers that had originally come, all the old people, which was so funny. Cause if you remember in the very first season, the old people were such a, just like a, Oh, why are you telling on us? Why are you getting in the way? Why are you doing this? Oh no, it just feels like we're keep putting down the old people. And by the end, we have this like whole collective of like spy old people that are taking back Va Sing Se are being so be bad A eh, that it's just, it's exciting. It's exciting to see like not ageism play into this children's show to be like, ah, oh, old people are always bad and annoying and hateful and da 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 da. It's like, no, it's so good what they're doing with this. So seeing the White Lotus and seeing that go on, I really did enjoy having all of those characters return, especially, especially Iroh. Um, I don't know if Iroh should have taken the throne or not. I think he would have been a viable candidate, and I feel like a lot of people might still see the good in him if he had been able, since we, we didn't end up killing the Fire Lord, since he is in prison, I feel like they wouldn't see it as something of like brother against brother trying to murder each other off. Um, but it's probably not a bad idea to give Zuko the throne. I just don't know if everybody has seen the change as much as we have seen the change of Zuko. All we got to see was the change of Zuko was seeing him go through a trial in the public eye, in a public eye that like worships the Fire Lord. Imagine this, because we did even see people in the show being like, yay, Fire Lord's winning over the Avatar. Huzzah, hurrah. So to see the sun come be banished and then come back with the avatar and take over it just seems like a little bit like people are still going to think that either way so are you going to give this into the hands of the son who was actively against the father or to the sand of the brother that was actively against the father i don't think either one is a good public eye public perspective i want to talk a lot about azula um and her downfall in this episode that we watched together it was so intriguing and compelling to watch because you have gotten to see a character, two characters under the same upbringing and the end game for both of them by the end of these episodes. Uh, both Azula and Zuko were brought up in the same manner, except for one received the wrath of their father and one avoided it and conformed to his ideas and standards. And seeing their product of their upbringing bring them to the point because we, we can't excuse just the upbringing. We have to also acknowledge that Azula was not a good person. She definitely made a lot of her own choices. However, 
there have been so many little things here and there. It's hard to pinpoint directly after watching this entire episode because it's been a, a few days since my last viewings, but it it's you have seen moments of compassion, moments of her actually caring about her girls, moments of actually like wanting other people around, and the beach episode, the beach episode especially, and talking about their uh their likened poor childhood. There is empathy there. It's just not in droves and and tenfolds that we get from every other character. So Azula is still a human being. To see her anything other than that is a shortcoming upon the audience and anybody else that is watching this. Um, so seeing her go through such a, a breakdown is really like it makes me feel a whole lot for her because you know what she could have been had she allowed people to uh to uh, allow herself to open up and not like make relationships based on fear but rather based on love because now she is alone she is hated uh she has everything that she has desired but at the same time it can all be stripped away from her so simply uh that she is to this point of self-sabotage she like gets up before her father and says this was my idea i'm supposed to come with you i'm supposed to like help i'm supposed to be there like need me is basically what she said in that moment and um he did give her the power of being the fire lord but just kind of pushed her aside be like you're still gonna be less than because i am the phoenix king and it's just like she needs somebody so badly and it just makes me want to hug her <laughs> but like uh i will not be able to like diagnose anything here because i don't think it's something that is easily diagnosable especially as somebody that's not skilled or, or profession in any of that we should not be diagnosing her we should just be recognizing her issues and what has brought her to this point so that we can like not have that happen to anybody in our lives and not solely judge people based on their character but rather like what has brought them to this point um i am so so grateful that zuko had iroh throughout we got to see him be very Azula like at the beginning of this entire series and then seeing that influence and that drive to make him the better person that he became throughout the series is just so impactful and I hope that we all have that Iroh somewhere for us. I knew I was gonna cry like a baby during this episode and the moment came when Zuko and Iroh came back in contact with another. Uh, Zuko apologizing and Iroh still accepting him never saying that he was never mad at him but that he was rather just like waiting for something good to happen waiting for the change to happen because he could see it there the entire time um and again i just wish azula had somebody like that rooting, rooting for her as well the fights in the series were absolutely stunning i should say absolutely stunning they did such a good job throughout the fighting styles are amazing to see them in com combination with all of the uh, fire bending abilities and the water bending earth and air bending abilities so fun so much fun especially when we have people that can't do those as well so sokka and suki doing their thing and top actually just going epic on it like so epically with her her metal bending uh i loved it i loved all of it and it was so captivating throughout there were so many moments of like who's gonna actually win and who's actually gonna turn the tides did not expect anybody to die uh but there were some moments that i was just like oof that's heavy that hurts uh especially when Sokka and Toph are hanging off the edge of the airship, that one was scary. Uh, first, I don't know how Sokka didn't break his back. That, if you had actually landed like that, that would have been shoulder popped out. Your back would have been so wrecked and holding onto your friends for the dear life. That it's a lot of responsibility, but he still manages to throw his boomerang. He still manages to throw his sword. He still manages to like be capable in that situation with no bending abilities and i love Sokka for all of that i think that he is such an inspiring character as somebody that doesn't have any bending abilities herself um just watching them actually like make a difference and never have been put down for it we had that like slight tiny moment there might have been something in one of those episodes but we even dismissed it because we're like no you're still fully capable. You and Suki are good fighters. And I love that about this show. They have done such a good job with those. Uh, that moment with Toph hanging there and there was like half a second when we didn't know if we were going to lose Toph. And that was just like, a, ouch, ouch, ouch. I don't know what's going to go happen here. Fortunately, we didn't go into the full emotional like de 
detriment of that. I feel like they could have if they had wanted to. Um, but the music was on point. The, the visuals were on point at that. That was an amazing moment. I think that's what is what's most compelling for me in fights is when you have moments like that where it's like fight, fight, fight. Cool, amazing graphics and things happening and, and stuff going places. But those hard hitting moments that are necessary in such an emotional battle that we've been waiting for make it for me. Um, we lost Suki for a half second. We didn't have the full emotional impact with that, too. I think that that we could have had like even more of a devastating like she's gone. She got she got squished or she's she's apart from us. And uh, we didn't have fully that. But we had like a second of like we just have to trust. We just have to trust that she's OK. We just have to have a trust. We have to focus on what we're doing, too, because we're in the dire situation as well. But we got to trust that that's OK. Uh, and it ended up being OK. Perfect moment was to have totally rectified in that. Um, but fighting in the air like that, especially as somebody that can't see, like feels with their feet on the ground, that had to be a lot for Toph too. Uh, even with her her amazing abilities, even with the next fight I'm going to talk about is actually the Fire Lord Aang. Um, having that super moment of just the epicness of back and forth between the Fire Lord at his peak with a comet's power against a normal Aang before his ability, it was obvious that somebody had the upper hand. Like. Even though I don't know if he was holding back because he didn't want to actually kill him with his abilities then, or if Aang potentially could have done that, he was just not wanting to like actually hurt the guy. So I I don't know if that he could have beat him on his own or not. I think that he could have, but he also had his morals that he was clinging to. Uh, as soon as Aang got his chi back, there was no question. It was like fighting a demigod. There was just like no way the Fire Lord was going to be there. And the thing is, it's the desperation of him running away, which, which intrigued me because I thought that he would fight back even harder, genuinely, because that was the only moment the Fire Lord could potentially beat the Avatar because of the comet. He was like way above his skill level. Um, because if we if we look at it without anything, be like, he, they're probably on like base level, if not a, a little bit higher, but then with the comet power. But with the Avatar power, it's like you gotta you gotta see where you're gonna be. You can't start from here to the, against the Avatar power because you know that's not gonna happen. Um, but lots of epicness. I think that could make a really cool tattoo with all of the swirls and combine in the like spherical Saturn looking thing of all the elements. I think that would be cool. I'm not getting one, but you go for it. My favorite, my favorite fight had to be between Azula and Zuko. Uh, what a time! What a time to have a standoff between the two fire people, <laughs> especially in the area that they are in, uh, fighting over their palace with the two big fires um, back and forth, blue and red, and seeing each other go for it. Uh, just a lot. Like, during the comet, that's a lot. We barely should have waited till after the comet, just like, not necessarily to hurt each other, but just like to minimize the damage around, because I still feel like you guys could have gone like at each other's throats if you wanted to, but I get it. Get it. You had to have this main epic moment. Um, not only the epic moment of Zuko sacrificing himself for somebody else, that was stunning, but my favorite moment had to be the capture, uh, because I did not know how they were going to stop Azula. Um, it was one of those things that you had to pin her down, but how are you going to do that? Uh, she's not somebody easily to be pinned down. So stopping her with the ice and not only stopping her with the ice, but baiting her to the exact point to putting your own life on the line, just seconds away. It was just cool. It was really cool to watch. Uh, I thought that Katara had to do more water bending with her arms, though, in order to do all that. But I'm going to leave it be because it was a really cool moment and I really did enjoy it. And uh, she moved through her own ice to capture Azula. Very cool. Talk a little bit about the relationships. It's time. <laughs> so we got the relationships that come to the very end of all of this. And uh, Mai and Zuko still end up together. I am... Personally, not super invested and not super intrigued. I think more of a relationship needs to be based on trust. And I don't feel like these two are too open and trust each other yet. So I am intrigued to see if that's something that would last or not. I don't want to like judge Mai based on what I know about Mai. I, I, I don't think she's a bad person. I just think that she hasn't shown me enough to be a good person. So I, I don't know. That's my opinion on Mai, and I know everybody's going to have differing opinions. Um, but it's glad to see that she had a happy ending, especially after making a good decision. Um, Tylee, 
I think that was perfect. Kyoshi Warriors, I think that she fits in perfectly well. She needed a bunch of, like, girl power around her, and she's definitely got girl power of her own. So, like, well done. Wonderful placement. I didn't even think of it, but, like, that is a great placement for her. Um, but uh, more of the relationships. Uh, we have the Katara and Aang relationship. I'm not mad about it. Not mad. Can see it going, happening, and it being a thing, and it lasting. And I'm just glad that they've had time to now be able to start to figure that out. Uh, I think it's cute. I don't think it's totally necessary. My personal opinion on a bunch of shows and uh, being somebody that just, like, really enjoys not to be a prize or, like, a relationship to be the end game. Uh, I like to see, like, people be able to, like, we did something good. And that's all you need out of it. Not necessarily that you need to be rewarded with a relationship or you need to be like, this is the end and good job. Uh, I just don't have as happy feelings with all that kind of stuff. It's my own personal preference that there just not be that, but I still don't mind these two getting together at the end. I still think that they had time to work out their differences and they have had time to like discover what they want. So I do think it's now something that I wouldn't mind watching move forward if it takes on to any kind of other show or to Legend of Korra or to the next live action that's being made. I would not mind to see that relationship develop now. It's no joke. I love the Suki and Sokka relationship. I think that they have had a very positive relationship and both of them are following the same guidelines of what they want and how they trust each other. And I think it's been very, very good. So I do really enjoy their relationship throughout, even at the beginning with the beach episode when they're like, ooh, okay, we're, we're cool if you want to dump him because of what he did to make a sandcastle look like you. And she's like, I think it's sweet. He like did something for me thinking of me. So like, I'm not going to judge it. He just like, it's the thought that counts. So even those little moments where everybody else expects them to like be tension, there is no tension. So I love that kind of relationship. And I think that they have done very well showing that relationship on screen with those two. So thumbs up. I'll, I'll let, I'll let, uh, that's my favorite relationship for sure. We had that relationship of Sokka, Katara, and their father also right at the end. And him saying like, I'm proud of you and your mother would be proud of you too. And Katara tearing up. So we had that bonded relationship once again, all come together after so long being apart, which is beautiful to see. Uh, we have Aang and Zuko in their new relationship of friendship being in the the coronation together. And Zuko not only like taking pride in that moment of I am the Fire Lord, but sharing that with Aang. Never once did he be like, like, we need to share this exact moment. He was just like, give him his recognition er, recognition too. He is the hero. He is the one that actually did all this. Cool. Now I can be crowned. Cool. My moment. And then we walk down together. So like they each had their highlighted moments and he was sharing that. I don't think ever original Zuko would be, be like that, even with like Azula or with anybody else. I don't think he would ever share that moment with anyone. So seeing that friendship come full circle from the past Avatar and Fire Lord to this Fire, uh, Fire Lord and Avatar. Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> but the last relationship we have to talk about is Zuko and his dad. This is the one that's like totally open-ended. This is the one that I'm just like, we need another episode. We need another series. We need the season. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give because what happened to his mom? <laughs> we had that question and we left it on a cliffhanger of what happened to his mom? Was this series supposed to end? Was I, I feel like everything else got tied up so nicely. So why didn't we get an answer to that question? That bothers me so much. So very much, but I want there to be more. I am very aware that there is another live action. Uh, I do know that there is a live action movie, which I will not be watching. I have heard too many bad things about it that I don't think I want to be watching that one. Instead, I'm hoping to sometime watch the next Avatar live action that comes out sometime this year. We'll find out and uh, I'll let you know my thoughts on that too. But in the meantime, everybody, thank you so much for going through this series with me. If you want to catch me live, you can go over to twitch.tv slash Sharvana. We can hang out, talk there, and maybe even watch the next Avatar together. Who knows? Uh, I do hope you subscribe. I hope you comment. And I hope you liked this video because I hope to be back sometime soon. Thank you so much for watching with me. Goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.